This is Yakko Warner, and hello, YouTube! <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding, guys. That was kind of a uh, throwback to the uh, last YouTube video that I did, which is a little over three years ago. Uh, it's when I compiled all the uh, different alternate ending lines for the Animaniacs theme and smashed them all into one video, which apparently was very well received. But anyways, what's up my brothers and sisters, this is Kiyakahi Matsumoto, aka Sonica Blue Streak, from my original YouTube username, which actually happened to be my nickname in high school. So just a little bit about myself, before I get into any details, um, I was born and raised on the island of Maui, in Hawaii, and I currently live here. I am currently, uh, sorry, eyes are bothering me. I am currently in the city of Wailuku. I was born and raised there as well, and that's on the northern side of the island. And uh, I'm half Japanese, half white, or as we like to say here, Haole. And, and yeah, I've just been living here my whole life. So, but anyways, this video is going to be, a, introductions aside, is going to be a little bit different than from what I've usually done. Instead of being it for entertainment purposes or something to make you laugh or say, oh, it's really cool. Uh, this video is going to be a review. And this the review is of a Saber Forge lightsaber. Now, just as a disclaimer, I am not a big Star Wars fan. You know, please don't rip me to shreds for that, but, you know, to each his own. I mean, space movies, for some reason, they just don't really do it for me. I think that's probably why it was such a big surprise when Guardians of the Galaxy ended up doing so well. is because it was just the right combination of um, special effects, acting, plot, character development, and biggest and most of all, humor. I am a huge comedy fan and I love to laugh. So if it's funny I mean, and it's got some good quality humor to it, I'm hooked. So that's why it was so surprising. I guess it's because space movies have just been overdone. You know, the, the corny special effects, the cheesy acting, and it, it, it just doesn't really do it so much for me. It's just been rehashed and redone over and over again. So I guess it just, you know, wore me out. But I do enjoy the Star Wars movies, even though I will take Indiana Jones over Star Wars any, of, any old day of the week. But there are two things that are a big draw for me to that film series. For one, uh, the Jedi. The Jedi, in case some of you may or may not know, were based off of samurai. And the way they dressed, you know, their robes, you know, they're very simple, very plain. You know, their codes of conduct, you know, the way they treated each other, you know, their honor and whatever. Even their fighting style had um, was based off of Kendall with uh, other elements incorporated into it like fencing and whatnot. Now, Kendall for those who also do not know, is a Japanese martial art the samurai developed, which involves fighting with a bamboo sword called the shinai. And they developed that because they ended up stopping killing people and they wanted to be able to keep their skill up. So that's what ended up happening. So that was the first thing. And that's kind of personal for me because my great-grandfather, Kesakichi, was a samurai himself. So it's kind of you know, I, I, I get I get more fascinated with that culture being as I never met him. But being as I know that's part of my blood and who I am, you know, I, it's, it's a little interesting for me. And the second thing is, even though I've never been a big fan of the Star Wars films, the lightsaber is something I've always been fascinated with, even as a kid. I mean, it just, I'm a, I'm a huge science nerd. I'm, I won't lie, I'll own up to it completely. And yeah, that's why I used to joke around, even though I'm athletic and relatively physically strong and able-bodied. Uh, that's why I just tell people, I'm not a nerd, but I'm not a jock. I'm somewhere in between. So, you know, just the science of the weapon and the weapon itself, I remember seeing that for the first time when I was a kid. And I'm going, oh, that's really cool. So, that's, you know, was the big draw. And the lightsaber I'm going to be reviewing is a Saber Forge Katana. Now, this particular help, I was having a little trouble getting. I ordered it in, on um, February 29th, because this year was a leap year. It's 2016. And it got here yesterday on July 2nd. So it took just over four months to get here. And that's because they had just kickstarted their adaptive saber parts program. And they were swamped with orders. I mean, their Etsy page just had been shut down completely. So you couldn't get the quick ship orders out, even if you wanted to. So, 
Yes, sorry, my eyes are bothering me. But anyways, they initially told me that it was going to take a six to eight week lead time. They went over that. I contacted them. They told me it had been updated to 10 to 12 weeks. Contacted them again, trying to find out what happened. They told me that it should be shipping out soon. About 14, almost 14 weeks later, I finally got a notification in the mail saying that it had been, or my email rather, sorry, that it had been marked from confirmed to shipped and that it would take around 5 to 10 business days for it to actually reach my doorstep. Of course, that didn't happen. It was, it took almost a month for it to, from the time it was marked as shipped to the time it was delivered on my doorstep for the tracking number to be updated because it was updated on June 3rd, I believe. It was, is when they gave me the tracking number and then on June 9th is when it was marked as pre-shipment. But it wasn't until, you know, just a few days ago. I think it was... Wednesday, June 29th, that it was finally marked as shipped. So that's just under three weeks. So, I mean, I understand it's not their fault. You know, they had a huge amount of orders because of the adaptive Saber Parts stuff and everything else. So I, I understand I'm not trying to bash Saber Forge or anything, but I'm just giving you guys a heads up that if you order from the main site, it's going to take the better part of four months or even slightly longer for your lightsaber to get here. And I'm on the East Coast. I live in Hawaii, and I'm closer to Oregon than the states that are further east or even other countries. So that's how long it takes. But if you're willing to wait, by all means, go for it. You're already, you're getting a good quality lightsaber. And by the way, they're not paying me to tell you that. But if you want something that's a little quicker, I would recommend going to their Etsy page and checking out the stuff that they have in stock. Now, this may or may not be my only review of these this thing, of one of their sabers anyways. Uh, it just depends on whether or not I feel like I want to start a collection or something like that. Besides, I don't make a whole lot of money, so it just <laughs> I can't, it's not something I can help. But anyways, the lightsaber that I ended up getting was the Saber Forge Katana. This is the Wakizashi Hilt option, which is the second length. And the reason why I got this for two things. Number one, the Saber Forge Katana is based off of an actual katana, but there's just one problem. The Tsuka, or the hilt itself, is 12 and a half inches long from emitter tip to pommel tip. You know, for that's the regular katana size for the saber forge. But there's just one problem: katana had, did not have hilts that long. A katana's hilt is no longer than about 10 inches long, and the blade was no longer than about 20 and a half inches or 73 centimeters. But then again, you know, people in Japan were short. Now me, I'm six foot three inches tall. For somebody my height, the tsuka or hilt would be somewhere around 11.3 inches long. And the blade for the katana would be around 32 inches, but that's for somebody my height. The other thing, the other reason I got this particular hilt length is because in the movies, you don't ever see a lightsaber that's longer than 11 inches. Obi-Wan's was the longest at 11 inches even, and Anakin's was about um, 10 and a half, I believe. So I'm just not only keeping true to the, you know, the Japanese culture, but I'm also keeping true to the films as well. Now... With this, you get, you know, the saber itself. You get your Allen key, you know, to remove the blade plug and the screws. The blade plug is right here. I got the uh, Phoenix Suba, and the hilt is standard, you know, black and silver. Another detail I also liked was the uh, newly designed kill key. I don't know if you can see it, but it's got properly because my camera won't focus but it's got the Saber Forge logo on it so which I think is a really nice touch I mean I kinda gonna miss the old kill key design from what I'm used to seeing but you know I think it's gonna be alright so you got that at the kill key the Allen wrench blade plug right here you also get your business card The, uh, basically the warrant of warranty information page, the community instructions, operations, etc. And you also get your standard 
V4 37 inch blade. Now I got the 37 inch because like I said I'm I'm a taller person and if if it was if I was just modeling it after a katana, I would stick with a 32 inch because as I was saying, you know, katana my height, I that's what it would be. But this is a technically this is a lightsaber, not a katana itself. So I'm trying to stick with the uh, 37 inch blade for now and see how it works. I mean, if it gets too heavy for me or feels a little weird, I can always downsize later. So, but anyways, the I got a Viridian sound font, which is the light side sound font. Sorry, it's getting a little dark in here, but and um, the light color I ended up getting was a 12 watt plus light blue LED. Now, I was first turned on to Saber Forge by uh, the Guardian, a YouTube channel called Guardians of the Force, and a few friends of mine. You see, a friend, a friend of mine, Jordan Leon, we spar at the lounge, and we were think, and me and him, Lanaki, and a few other guys. And we were thinking about sparring in the dark. We were just toying around with various ideas, like I was thinking about putting a glow-in-the-dark strip on the backside of my foam, foam uh, katana. And then Jordan and his girlfriend Shani ended up getting Saber Forge Acolyte Hero Tears. And you know, those things were bright. I mean, they weren't 12 watt plus like mine, but those, those puppies were bright. Then I went and watched uh, The Guardians of the Force. It's a YouTube channel that they... And they, they are... <laughs> you know, big fans of Saber Forge themselves. Funny guys, too. And uh, they showed me how tough the Saber Forge's Infinity Edge blades were. Because they did the stress tests, and it was a funny video, too. I was laughing all the way through. And then there's another YouTube channel called City of Sabers. He also turned me on to the 12-watt uh, plus color options. Now, 12 watt plus is a little slightly brighter than 12 watt. I guess it's supposed to diffuse light across the blade more evenly, especially for the 37 inch ones, as you see. And uh, apparently now that's standard. So even if you order still select the 12 watt on the menu, they'll just give you 12 watt plus automatically from what I've been doing because they use four quad Cree XBE diodes, I believe. And it's supposed to light up really well. So City of Sabres, he has done a lot of videos showcasing you know the individual saber fours and even ultra sabers lightsabers that he has collected he shows up every little detail and he even does videos of what the bl individual blade colors look like in the dark so which i really think is neat because you know if you're having trouble deciding which you want to choose those would be a good tutorial as far as the blues go he's done cyan blue uh, uh medium blue and deep blue he has done a pink, pink, a white, green, and lime green, and uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I can't, I forget. He, he's probably done some more for Saber Forge, but I forget. But anyways, I would check him out, and if you're wanting to see, you know, a stress test for the blades, I would check out the Guardians of the Force as well. They're not paying me to say that at all. And this is probably going to be the longest intro I'm ever going to do on a video. So, you know, forgive my rambling on, but, you know, this is, I'm not going to be doing this again. If I do another Saber Forge review, you know, I'll keep it short, I'll keep it sweet, I'll just go into the basic details. But anyways, um, any, yeah, back to the same, this thing, Viridian Sound Font, 12 watt plus light blue. Saber Core, Viridian. <laughs> you see, that's bright. Sorry, might be blinding the camera a little bit, but this puppy is bright. So, we just get the lay plug out. Standard. It's kind of short, actually. As you can see. this yeah this puppy is really bright from what I can see I mean uh, the camera I'm using right now is a Logitech webcam it's a 920 C920 and it doesn't really pick up you know, lighting all that well so my apologies for that my iPhone 6s does a better job of that but this thing the light diffuses 
evenly all the way to the tip. And I'm not sure if you can see that now, it just depends on its focus, but it does that fuse evenly to the tip. And I can tell you this for a fact, and this puppy is bright. Now, I'm going to show you, for those of you who don't know about this, there are settings you can do to adjust it, because this is a champion tier saber, it comes with sound and light, and you can do settings to adjust what you want. So let me power this down. Now to get to your menu, you basically just hold down the um, the home button or the activation button. Hold it down. Main menu. Select optical frequency one. Your optical frequency is your blade flicker. One is just a regular beam of light. It's solid. It doesn't do anything. Here's two. Two. Now this is the lowest flicker available. One step up. This is slightly faster. This is the one that I usually keep mine on, is number three. Four. Four is even faster. The camera is barely picking that up. Five. And five is the absolute fastest. One, two, three. Select sound intensity low. There are three options for sound intensity low, high, and muted. High. Sensitivity, one. Now, impact sensitivity, you have options of one to all the way through nine. I usually keep mine at seven because with impact sensitivity at all the way at nine, if you grip your saber kind of on the rough side, it will make the clashing sound. So I usually keep mine at seven. So it's a nice balance. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, See? two. Three, four, five, six, seven. Select motion sensitivity, one. Now motion sensitivity, there really is no explanation for that one. It's basically the noise it makes when you move your saber up and down. But the thing is with me, I like to keep mine at seven again because even if you're doing a slow movement like this, it'll still make the sound. So I like to keep mine at seven again because it's a nice balance again. Seven. And you just hold it down to select your option again. All settings saved. Now, the kill key, as many people know, for champion to your and hero to your sabers is what causes the saber to power down. But it's also where you stick the recharge port, and that's something I forgot to mention. The recharge charge uh, AC outlet is also the re AC recharge uh, recharger. Sorry is included with this thing. And you just plug it in and it'll automatically depower your saber and start charging from there. You will see an orange light when it's charging and once it's fully charged, that orange light will turn from orange to green. So, you stick this in and you just hold this down to shut it off. And you stick the kill key back in so it doesn't burn any more power. Alright. But that is it. Oh, and the other thing I forgot to mention. This also comes with a uh, cover tech knob. What this does is it it's a belt. It allows you to hook a light, your saber, onto a belt loop or something. And I particularly don't see myself doing that anytime soon. Plus, with me, when I'm, when I usually fight, you know, more combat oriented, so I like to slide my hand down. Unfortunately, this thing is getting in the way. So. What I'm going to do is you do have the option, for those who don't like the knob, to take it off. You have to find an Allen key about this size. And you can just stick that in. And it comes right off. And as you can see, the hole isn't that big. So it's not going to leave a gaping hole in your lightsaber. It's actually quite clean. Quite clean looking. Because now... It can slide up and down, no problem. One downside to this, and I kind of find this, found this out the hard way, is these edges on the, the Suba, the wings of the Phoenix, are sharper than they look. And I nick myself on 
the knuckle of, of my my right thumb. So if I would if I were you, if you like to hold yours close to the emitter, and if you get this, wear gloves. I personally use a pair use a pair of Mechanics Impact gloves when I do sparring because the edges of Jordan's acolyte close to the emitter are sharp too. But if you like to hold yours, you know, more down like this, then you should be safe. But I will be doing. That's it for the uh, Sage of Force Katana. So far, I am very pleased with how it turned out. I will be doing a video later on to show what the 12 watt plus light blue looks like in the dark, and I will be using the camera for my iPhone 6s. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for tuning in. I hope, hope if you have any questions, I was able to answer them. So, sayonara. Thanks. Have a good day.